So exactly a year ago today, I got this email. Unfortunately, you're not accepted to do the running of Pikes Peak. Pikes Peak Hill Climb is an invitation only process. I set my hat to be thrown in the ring last year and they said, no, thank you. That was the right call. I think it's pretty obvious why they even stated it. The committee cited a lack of demonstrated and relevant road racing experience. That's smart on their part, they kept me alive. That drove me to prove that I should be considered at least some point in the future. I didn't know a year ago how to build a car for the track because I didn't have any experience driving a proper track car. I did it the hard way and we took the three rotor from a drag car to a track car. Grid life is such a springboard, growing and learning and just all the people there have made me capable of doing what I'm doing right now. One year later, earlier this morning at 9 a.m., congratulations, you have been selected. I wanted to talk about why we're doing something so absolutely crazy. Everything I do here, every single thing I do here has always been connected, all of these things. And it all comes down to this car. There's no surprise as to why we're standing in front of the four rotor filming this. We're not taking the four rotor. And there's a very good reason why. I want to be here a year from now telling you that we're going to be taking it. I am still a very big rookie. I do not have the driving experience to set something insane, but the event is almost five months exactly away from now. So I am going to obsess, put every bit of effort into being a driver that I've done the same exact emotion with rotary engines. And you see what that got me. Several years ago, people were saying, oh, you know, that four rotor is never going to run. You'll never make the power. Those comments were always leading me on my way to success. And here we are now that people call me a rotary expert. I still don't think I deserve the title, but the point is, is that I feel like I'm capable of doing it. I am holding back a lot of emotions because this process is actually pretty stressful. This is a very expensive investment. All you're doing is spending money. More importantly, at the end of the day, you're spending your effort and time to do one simple drive up the side of a mountain. I had the opportunity, thanks to Top Gear, to ride along with David Donner in one of their episodes. He set a record of the fastest production car with, of course, a Porsche, and I think it was 950 and change. Feeling him going up that mountain, I told him that I wanted somebody else to drive the four rotor someday, and he was like, no, 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 no. You need to drive that car. You built it, you're driving it up the mountain. He sure as fuck was right. That is a death trap. Not only is the roll cage far from certified, far from safe, the engine and my leg are making love to each other. The drive shaft and my arm are making love to each other. The fuel system and my back are all really good friends at this point. It's not something that is ready for that. It weighs a shit ton. The list goes on. And as many of you know, this is not a secret, that car is being built from the ground up to do some of the most insane level of time attack hill climb stuff that nobody has ever done before. I'm dead serious. If I'm, I'm this age saying that sort of shit, you know I've got something in my back pocket. That takes time to build. Me, as a driver, needs to drive a 1,000 horsepower car before I drive an 1,800 horsepower car. And so the three-rotor is what we are taking to Pikes Peak. things to talk about but number one thing is that this year this car as a track car exists I have earned the number 146 <laughs> <laughs> I've bled for the number 146 not that that number means anything let me run you through a little bit about where this car is and where it needs to be the whole point of this car was to meet the street mod class what is street mod that stands for street modification I wanted to build a car for grid life that fit those rules. So that has to do with the aerodynamics, the type of engine, the drivetrain, the stock pickup, the suspension, you name it. This car was so far from that last year that one of the things about applying to Pikes Peak is you have to tell them the car, show them all the pictures, show your experience, but also what the car is and what you plan to change with it from now till then. I wouldn't believe me either last year when I was like, I'm gonna have this car look like this in a year. Even then, it's still not ready for Pikes Peak. The number one thing before we get into the cool stuff, safety. It's one of the safest cars I own. I would die 
very quickly on Pike's Peak with the car though, as it is. We still only have a four point roll bar. It is not a roll cage. And that distinction gets a little murky as you start talking about number of points. But on this one, we only have one, two, three, four points to the chassis. So it does strengthen the chassis and it would create a safer rollover situation. But more importantly than that, it allows my seat restraints to hold in proper places. You know, five point, six point harness, chair slayer, Big shout out to him. He's a good digital friend of mine. And we might actually be filming coincidentally with him on Top Gear this season. Makes a 3D scan roll cage for the FD. I need this to be a track weapon FD. So we will not be modifying any of the suspension points. Suspension is gonna be the name of the game here. We have the Olins on there. Pike's Peak is more like Big Willow, used to be, and just bumpy as hell. So we are going to be installing Haltex shock level sensors. So we'll be monitoring the suspension more than most people do. We're going to be going up to 14,000 feet in the air and we're going to be starting at around 6,000. I can tell you firsthand, if you just have it on wastegate pressure, this car would go from, we'll say 19 PSI, it'll go down to about 14 at 6,000 feet. You'll be massively down in power if you don't do wastegate controls. That E-gate is going to be one of our saving graces. One of the coolest things is really helping us build power up in the air and one of the things that is required from that is pressure sensor for the world. So this little guy is just right now measuring the pressure of the air here. Put power to it and we would see zero because we're close to the atmosphere. But you can have up to negative 14 pounds of vacuum which is actually zero all the way up to whatever PSI. This will actually help correct my tune so I can drive it and the car automatically adjust for the atmosphere. Cooling is gonna be a very big part with this. We have maximized medium. We have made the most out of mediocre cooling on this car. Some of the biggest problems we've had is the cooling over here and on the other side and how it creates high pressure zones in the front of the car. This version of these winglets on the, this side of the car at 130 miles an hour I could tell you the pressure in the engine bay was so much less that the fans no longer needed current to move. When I didn't have these on, those fans would take about seven to eight amps to run at 130 miles an hour. It's measurably working and we're gonna do that even more. This thing's gonna be our best attempt because we have half the air to work with. So we're gonna be potentially adding more radiators to increase our cooling capacity. Cause right now we just got to the point where we can run 10 minutes flat. So one of the goals that you're gonna be seeing from now till June is can we run this car flat out for 10 minutes and not overheat? For the most part, the block itself stays the same. I don't know what's going on, but this engine does not die. I think one thing we might do is realize that it might die someday. Refresh it. We got tons of actual testing on the mountain, but be prepared to potentially have to build a second block because what would be worse than blowing an engine would be blowing an engine and not having another one to put in to race and just be like, well, we blew it and we blew it. ABS system from Continental is doing phenomenal. We're actually in talks with Willwood to upgrade the brake fluid and the front pads, but we're at an eight degree angle at all times in a hill climb. So you're not on the brakes as much as you normally would be, but you still need that bite. You still need the brakes braking. We're gonna be doing a lot more ducting under the car, front of the car, creating really a little bit more downforce in the front because we already have the decent rear. Now that brings me to the rear of the car, which is actually probably the biggest change that's going to happen aside from the roll cage. We have to replace the fuel tank. And that opens some cool opportunities, but the stock fuel tank on the RX-7 looks like a shitted diaper. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's a saddlebag in the back. Right there is the beginning of where that can actually rise. And you need about 11 degree angle to really have air stick to the surface of this. That is not that. And you want it to start at the rear axle. The fuel tank is right there. Swapping to an FIA certified fuel cell, which basically has a ladder inside of it, my bladder is going to be emptying into my pants while I'm driving, but the bladder is going to keep the fuel inside of the aluminum tank. Will allow us to do it in a shape that gives us room for the proper diffuser. Having a safer fuel system means also better downforce management. One of the coolest things that we are going to do to this car is also one of the most expensive. The three rotor needs to have oil pressure at all times. This is not an ad for Valvoline, but Valvoline speaks for itself in the fact that I have lost oil pressure repeatedly while pulling two Gs 
in turns now. I've done baffling, I've done all this other shit, but a wet sump tank is pulling air every so often when it turns that hard. We are swapping this to a dry sump tank. That actually creates more weight up high and the engine sits at the same spot. Cool, I just raised the center of gravity. Well, not exactly. But this is for the three rotors. So the pan now is only this high. With the Liberty Gears Granis transmission, a lot of you have made this comment over and over again is that my steering wheel is very far from my driving spot. And I'm very aware of that, but the problem is the shifter's further than the steering wheel. Okay. It's not even in gear, but it is further to grab than my steering wheel. So the issue is that the shifter, you can see even the boot wants to be back about an inch. I can shift the whole drivetrain back two or three inches, get the shifter closer to me, and then put the removable steering wheel adapter and get all of my driving controls closer to me. So let's work backwards for a second. What I'm saying is we are going to take the entire drivetrain and move it back so I have a better shifter. The stock three rotor has a divot in the oil pan where the steering rack is. So we are going to move it back far enough that we are behind the steering rack, can drop the engine down the extra two inches or so that we remove, lower center of gravity for all of this metal, back further so the, the weight distribution front to rear is, is more correct. That's a win, 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 win. What? Next. Well, honest to God, the first thing I'm going to do is probably cry as soon as I go to sleep tonight. I'm overwhelmed. I'm beyond thankful that the committee chose to take a risk in me because I could make it look bad and crash. But while we're doing the 12 rotor, we're doing all this other stuff, everything is to make what I'm doing better, the fastest I can be. All the stops are pulled out, making the car faster, more reliable, lower temperature, but more importantly, seat time, making me the type of driver that you think I am as a builder. Whether that's good or bad, that's up to you. But the point is, is that I need to be the best I can be as a driver, and I'm a new driver. So you're talking education, experience, accelerated everything, getting the professionals that are the experts in that thing to teach me, to share and save me time because I don't have 30 years until my bike's peak running. Obviously my life is on the line. You're gonna see me just do it all, do everything I can to have your faith in me rewarded that hey this guy is not going to completely fuck this up enjoy this journey because it's from now till june every video is related to either absolutely making a fool of myself or doing one of the coolest things anybody on youtube has done but either way it's going to be entertaining